What's good to YouTube? And welcome to the house. Last night was freaking crazy. Thank you so much. We had a live stream. We did a tipsy market watch. That's all the remnants of last night. Logan Paul indirectly hosted the channel when he ended his live stream. The algorithm sent people my way. We had over a thousand people late at night just talking Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, and everything like that. And we also came across a remote dual ban list that Konami has officially updated. So with the extravaganza this weekend, you don't want to get DQ'd for practices that they've put out there that they said you have to follow within their rules and regulations and also you don't want to be playing cards that would knock you out of these tournaments there are giant prizes to play for literally with giant cards that are worth a thousand dollars when you're looking at an Egyptian god card and god slime you have play mats that are worth two hundred dollars like the Toon Kingdom play mat apparently like that is a rare play mat it was rare and actually released before but this is going to be one of the only weekends I think you have to win them the sacred beast structure mat so many things are going on and it's all remote duels so you definitely want to look at this guide and, and there's things that are always remember so you have to do these and then a lot of remote duel best practices that they want you to follow let's just go ahead and get to the ban list because i think that's what a lot of you guys will be here for and then we'll cover rules and regulations that you should be following and then their suggestions cards that should not be used in remote duels the following cards cannot be used in remote duel events as their effects cannot be properly resolved in a remote duel environment the very first one is by far the most impactful we have exchange along with exchange we have amazonas chain master lullaby of obedience which kind of fell off of play after they changed the rules on verification and that sort of stuff gift exchange yujo friendship so you can't extend that handshake officially they don't want that meme coming into real life parasite parasite and transmission gear yo triff got banned jokingly from dueling book for this before and it's something that i have drunkenly done like tried to get my opponent to extend the handshake so i would have got banned from dueling book rightfully so that night but by far exchange it's been going up in price and it really has its place in the metagame and the person showing that off right now is Shu Ping Sensei. Look at this list. He's playing Triple Drag Down in the Grave, Triple Exchange, getting results with this deck. And Shu Ping even has words on this right now. He says, When Konami doesn't want me to ruin the format, lol. Rip in for Noble Knights, Rip Exchange, 9 14 2020, 2 10 8 2020. In case you're not familiar with what happened, a few days ago, Konami updated a remote dual best practice guide and included the following section. So Shu Ping and his strategy is able to dismantle mantle hands and what exchange does is early on after you've put thrown your combo pieces on board you haven't been hand trapped quite yet you go ahead and play this bad boy and both players can select a card from each other's hand and add it to their own so it's like oh you've already hand trapped me but that trip tactics talent you were holding looks pretty good and you give them more useless cards stuff that won't necessarily help their combos and you are going to continue with an infra noble knights taking apart their hand doing combo setting up your board and this is a huge part of it and it's a little better than drag down uh, into the grave because drag down into the grave lets them draw a card after so they can still get lucky they can still get into an impermanence they can get into another card where exchange is a much more controlled base of this so you're using two cards to give them one yes the exchange and the card you're handing them but after you've comboed or actually started up your board where they haven't been able to interrupt yet this is a very skilled card and uh it hits the list because you know giving your opponent the card and letting them have it in their hand rather than just the field like a kaiju like you can't really replicate that now let's go ahead into some of their practices but i do think that's the one that by far matters the most on their ban list so be aware of those banned cards for remote dueling we recommend the following practices to help maintain a fair and friendly competition it's weird because they say stuff like recommend or whatever so you have the best practices but then you have the actual things you have to follow such as cards that should not be but then they're straight up forbidden so like some of them sound like suggestions but uh these first ones are pretty much rules and regulations always remember place your camera so your entire field is visible you can't have stuff off screen it's like haha my surprise back row no 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 you can't be doing that show your entire field at all times also so things aren't going from the graveyard banished pile back and forth that kind of shady stuff communicate with your opponent whatever is happening let your opponent know if you are unsure about something your opponent has said or done ask announce your phases such as draw phase standby phase main phase battle phase main phase two and end phase so they want you to progress the phases very clearly with the opponent it's almost like a certain online simulator if we had a video game at this point would do that for you by clicking and showing them 
but we're playing with our physical cards online and doing the best that we can. Announce your actions. For example, normal summoning Sangan, special summoning Cyber Dragon. Make sure like they know you've used your normal summon or if you are special summoning, how you are doing these effects so that it is clear to your opponent. In response, I'll activate uh, link summons, etc. They want you to clearly state what you are doing. Play at an appropriate, considerate pace. This means also not just slow playing. Uh, do not to play your cards so quickly your opponent can't keep up with what's happening. Don't go bup, 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 and then be, wait, I had a response three things ago. You're just combo. I have a hand trap. You know, they don't want that. But also, do remember they hand out slow play penalties in official play. We saw that even in the remote duel invitational. In the finals, I think Sam even got one. So they will be checking for your pace either way too fast or too slow avoid unnecessary action and movement such as frantic hand shuffling i think this is the first time it has ever been addressed in an official konami document hand shuffling they don't do this excessively wow allow your opponent a chance to respond confirm to your opponent when their action is okay to resolve allow time for any lag or frozen video within this by the way the official uh regulation i think it's down here at the bottom format and time limit Yu-Gi-Oh! tcg remote duels are running a best of three it is possible to play more than three duels in a match because of draws and that kind of stuff duelists will also have 50 minutes instead of 40 each round to complete their deck duels before the end of match procedures so you actually have an extra 10 minutes to perform these actions that you'll be needing to do like if you physically have the card they're suggesting you actually put it on the board and if you don't you write it down on like loose sleeves and that kind of stuff for changing control so they do actually have like even procedures here but it's best remote dual practices is what this is titled so it's like don't mix you know like after the game shuffle in your own gamma seal in the deck when you weren't playing that they want you to very clearly be able to identify your opponent's cards if you're representing them and you have the physical card whereas i think probably the best route is this although like calculating game and that kind of stuff can be a lot harder for your opponent so this might even be better for you but naming like the card in this kind of a sense and bothering to have all those loose sleeves not everybody's going to have uh the full access to it but it's how they're kind of telling people to go keep blank note cards so you, it doesn't have to be a sleeve by the way note cards or whatever people should be able to make those no matter what are blank pieces of paper whatever you need to represent on your side of the field this should not be an actual budget problem if you're playing Yu-Gi-Oh. in my mind like, like uh, being able to find like notebook paper for a dollar etc if you don't have note cards then any non-game card can act as a placeholder so like they're saying even this so like they, they are very open-minded and budget friendly though i would think you want to do one of the two if you have the card that put it on the field i think that takes up time to sleeve it in different sleeves and would kind of prolong the experience whereas just quickly write it and get down or putting a placeholder seems much more acceptable to me uh we recommend using game mats with zones just for clarification that makes a lot of sense with mech knights being a deck and that sort of stuff and not having to constantly tell people zones but that is a suggestion not a necessity that's why it, a lot of these are best remote dual practices using empty space above the graveyard for banished cards x check lighting can cause glare on cards be attentive when setting up also your play area and uh they're showing like how, where to put the banished pile for people as well for remote duels while it's still in the uh view so i'm kind of going backward through this i'll link this down below so that you guys can access this list as well i think it's very important that you go through it especially if you're remote dueling but uh always keep your hands visible so they, they should always be on screen not my secret card or something like that they're basically giving you a, a good list of things that are both necessary to do and also what you can do if you're having problems with certain aspects of remote dueling good job by konami putting this together i know i harped a little on them not having an official simulator or way to play online as a lot of people do in 2020 but this guide is pretty comprehensive uh overall good i i wish there was a way to like more represent like you could just like have the the card in hand like written for exchange i feel like but yeah there is differences there i suppose on being resolved properly and how it would take longer throughout the duel so that's the official remote duel ban list though what do you guys think of everything here has this hurt your deck at all are you an infer noble player it's kind of a soft hit on you depending on how you play infer noble knights and um i'm i'm really actually starting to enjoy remote duels more i know i made fun of them a lot for being skype duels but as a 
fan watching and getting to see Yu-Gi-Oh played even at a slower pace, even at like people having to be more clear and attentive and that kind of stuff. I've been enjoying watching streamers and also official Konami remote duels as like the European one this morning. It's been nice and it's a return to Yu-Gi-Oh's physical form. And now that we have prizing and stuff that matters for it, wherever, haha, <laughs> you got your deck during this time. There's no point to get a deck. Well, thousand dollar prizes you can win online sounds like a pretty good reason for me. So it does give validation to people going and buying those cards. And we're finally getting true structure eight man tournaments. Somebody sent me a true Draco list last night, actually, uh, after beating Pack and a Dragon Link. They, they want to play Matt with true Draco. People really are out here wiling and having fun at remote duels.